I'm Miranda Keys, a food stylist and foodie, and I'm on a dream assignment for Food and Drink magazine. Ready for a road trip today? Sure am. I'm so excited we're doing this today. It's gonna be such a fun day. I'm with award-winning baker, Justine Martin, and we're going from Sudbury to Manitoulin Island, exploring the culinary scene and all the tastes the area has to offer. Yeah, we're stopping at five places, right? Yeah, and along the way, we'll collect a bunch of ingredients, some drinks, some local fruit, veg, and then we'll make a delicious dinner at the end of the day. I'm getting really hungry already. We start our culinary journey in Sudbury, the largest city in Northern Ontario. It used to be a big mining town, but today it's got a diverse economy that includes a full-blown food scene. You're from Sudbury originally. Yeah, I'm born and raised in Sudbury. And now you're running your own bakery. Yeah, I started out of my house uh, just doing stuff for friends and family. Mm -hmm. And within about a year and a half, and I had to move to a bigger space. That's so cool. Our first stop, we're gonna to go to Crosscut Distillery. Their flagship gin is really fantastic. Okay, so this is our still room. This is where all the product is made. So we're a grain to glass facility, uh, which is actually more unusual than you would think. We're running four stills here. The fermentation of grains to create alcoholic beverages is part science and part palate. And each stage of the distillation process produces something different. This is what they call the heads, and this is what will come off the still first. So this is the heads. <laughs> It's, it's not consumable. <laughs> then we have the hearts, which would be the tank we want to keep. Oh, yeah. that's nice. So it's, it'll be very clean. Um, mm. yeah. That's still 95%, so yeah. I wouldn't encourage <laughs> okay. you. Yeah. And then at the end, you get um, the last tank that we'll collect will be called the tail. So yeah. uh, a lot of wet dog, wet cardboard type flavors. <laughs> Sounds great. The, How the end product tastes depends on the expert nose of the master distiller. Okay, well, would you like to do some samples? Of course. Awesome. You're gonna do some tasting, and I'll taste some later when I'm not driving the car. I Sounds good. So the vodka is a triple grain vodka. We use wheat for the creaminess, oats for a certain uh, honey sweetness, and rye for the citrus and pepper notes that you'll get on the tail end of it. Ooh, but it's super smooth. Mm. A local harvest gin. Oh, that's really nice. Mm. You can smell the anise. Totally. Petal heads for those who drink vodka soda who want some flavor. The color is so vibrant. It is. Mm. It is. What it does that like come from? Vibrant. The rose hip gives a bit of it, but uh, hibiscus is the key uh, one. It is so floral. How unusual. That's really nice. I can't wait to taste it later. <laughs> <laughs> From Sudbury, Justine and I will hit the Trans-Canada and wind our way to Manitoulin, the largest freshwater island in the world. I mean, even just the drive right now is so beautiful. I can't believe that Manitoulin is going to be even more beautiful than this. Oh yeah, this is, this is nothing. Once we get on the island, it's really stunning. Over 70% of Manitoulin is covered with soil thinner than a foot above bedrock, or with no soil at all. 
Turns out that's all you need for dairy farming. Local hay and grass feed island cows all year round. So it makes perfect sense for our next stop to be Three Cows in a Cone, an iconic roadside snack bar selling Farquhar Dairy's famous ice cream. Farquhar's has perfected the flavors of a Canadian childhood. Butterscotch, maple walnut, chocolate and vanilla, which we'll serve with dessert at our dinner later. Time for snack. <laughs> when you're on an island, it's not always easy to find a grocery store that carries healthy, sustainable food. Very good. Our next stop, the Island Jar, is a store that will leave you with a good taste in your mouth. Not just because their food is delish, but because it respects the planet. I heard that this is a place to come if you're looking for anything local. Yep, that's what we try and be, is kind of a, a promoter of all the local food on Manitoulin and the surrounding area. Do you have any products that you're, like, people come here just for that? The, the heartwood mushrooms, uh, pawberry jelly. That's kind of what we're, we're known for on Manitoulin. People who are born here are called haw eaters. Um, and then another one is the chaga mushrooms. Um, so they only grow in um, northern Ontario. It's a fungus that grows on birch trees. The island jar often works directly with local producers, and we are lucky enough to meet the team behind Heartwood Mushrooms. These are the most beautiful mushrooms I've seen in a really long time. Thanks. What kind are they? Um, so we have the white oyster mushrooms, mm -hmm. and then we have our phoenix on the side here. It's like we just harvested these not even an hour ago. So oh oh wow, God. we're just yeah. bringing them in right now. That's so. incredible. Yeah. We definitely want to pick up a bunch of these beauties for our dinner later, and grab a few other ingredients from the jar while we're at it. So our next stop is Manitoulin Brewery. a popular place there's people just coming in and out of here constantly yeah so you're totally inspired by the, the community and definitely I mean you know beer is is what we do but we wanted to be able to profile different landmarks around Manitoulin yeah. Island so really kind of encourage and, and share uh, th these brands are are real places right these are things that can help draw folks in to come experience what Manitoulin has to offer local ingredients are key at Manitoulin Brewing Company Strawberries from Pikewood Farms and chocolate from Manitoulin Chocolate Works are used in seasonal brews. And local honey is used in Killarney Cream Ale. You know, we're, we're happy to be another business here and offering craft beer for Manitoulin Island and for the rest of Ontario. Bread is the last ingredient on our list for dinner. And for our last stop, we're going to a place to learn how to make it ourselves. Bannock and Berries is an experience served up at the Great Spirit Circle Trail, a gathering place offering cultural tourism from an Aboriginal perspective. Hi, hey. Hello. Tyrone is going to show us how Bannock is made and how it's best served. Oh, they call me the Bannock Sensei. Oh, <laughs> okay, amazing. So what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off with our bowl. Put one cup of flour. She's the baker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> make Great. a crater. Keep going. That should be good, right? Good. There. Okay. Yep. You really did add the perfect amount of water. You knew exactly how much. <laughs> <laughs> Sensei. Yeah. Alrighty. Crap. So now we wait for the magic to happen. Yeah. Okay. This tea is a blend of cedar, sumac, and apple along with some energy boosting herbs. Sounds amazing. That's a beautiful color. It's gorgeous. Together. Nice. You wanna check it Ooh. out? Ooh, it's nice and golden. That's perfect. I'm gonna flip this onto there. 
Ooh. Oh, that smells amazing. Yeah, help yourselves. Thank you so much, Tyrone. You're it's welcome. Amazing. It really does pair perfectly with that mm -hmm. jam. Mm. Delicious. You think we could take another one with us for our dinner tonight? Oh yeah, please do. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You're welcome. That's awesome. He was so nice. Yeah, Hispanic sensei. Five stops down and it's time to cook an amazing meal to cap off a great day. Yeah, I feel like we have so many great ingredients that we collected along the way today to make a really delicious dinner. You're going to turn left in one and a half kilometers. It alerted me that there are unpaved roads on this route. Oh, We're going off-road? Apparently. All right. We're heading to a cottage owned by some of Justine's good friends. It's gonna be super fun. We're cooking over the open flame, and so you're getting the true Northern Ontario camp experience. Joining us to help prepare our meal is Justine's boyfriend, Chef Rob Burlington. I know Rob, you're hustling over here. <laughs> that butter smells ridiculous, Rob. Butter. That's like my favorite thing. I'm making sour cream berries with toasted bannock and smoked fish. That looks so nice. And then I'm just gonna simply cook the mushrooms in butter and salt. That's all they need. Tonight I'm gonna be making a really beautiful rustic pie with some fresh Northern Ontario blueberries and a lavender syrup. And then we've got sprigs of thyme rolled right into the pie crust. Oh, wow. Oh, that is almost done. Another day at the office. Uh, tonight for dinner, we're making a braised venison with charred tomatoes, uh, carrots, and Manitoulin beer. amazing lakes. You're just waiting for a moose to cross your path. And then you have all these amazing people who, who are such a tight-knit community. Producers who are growing amazing things, producing amazing beverages, cooking amazing food, and they all collaborate with one another and support one another. This is Peak Manitoulin Island. I'm Devin Rajkumar. Next week on Five Stops, join food writer Suresh Das and I as we start in Creemore, end up in Caledon, and seek out everything delicious in between. <laughs>